Hi everyone, my name is Toby Lanjo. I am a consultant that helps organizations create mutually beneficial relationships with open ecosystems. Today, I'd like to address one of the most basic and yes, most fundamental questions about open source. Simply, what is open source? And I'd like to try and give a more nuanced answer to this question that we usually hear. So there are two reasons um, that this came up. The first is we've seen a rise in ethical licensing over the course of the last few years. It's being driven by open source practitioners who are concerned about how their software is used. And also, um, we've seen a high number of uh, high profile open source projects um, move from open source licensing to more restrictive licenses. Um, some still open source, like AGPL, and some that really fall out of the scope of what is recognized by the open source initiative as open source licenses. Um, this started a few years back with Redis, then we had MongoDB follow suit, um, more recently Elastic, and uh, even more recently Grafana, uh, which moved to GPL. So if you look up what open source is, you generally fairly quickly end up on the website of the Open Source Initiative, looking at the open source definition. But what does the open source definition actually describe? Well, it turns out that the open source definition doesn't really define open source. Actually, it defines what an open source license is. And as you can see, this is fairly different, right? This is not just a rhetorical issue. Um, it, it's not the same thing. And if we were in person and I was able to ask some of you here um, in the room, what are the features, um, how you would define open source, you would probably say widely different things than it's the license of the software corresponds to the open source definitions 10 criteria. For example, you might talk about the ability of contributing to an open source project, or maybe the community aspects of the project, um, the ability to work together, the ability to work in the open, the ability to learn in public, the fact that the software is just freely available for anyone to use. The ability to learn from others, to network, um, all of the community aspects. As you can see, the definition is really broad and different people, uh, different constituencies in the open source ecosystem will have a different perspective and think differently about what open source is and what it means to them. So just looking at this, we see fairly quickly that although the licensing aspects of open source are important, there's a whole other set of aspects that are important to people too. And it's interesting to sort of like try to combine those in order to dig a bit deeper. And if you really look at what all of these aspects are, um, they're really about the norms of open source on one side and the legal licensing aspects on the other. So what is this going to look like in a two by two full quadrant diagram? Well, let's simply put on the Y axis, whether the license of a project has been certified by the open source initiative. And on the X axis, let's put whether the project follows or ignores typical open source norms, like the ones that we discussed before. So we'll package in uh, this horizontal axis, 
sort of all of what makes a project feel open source, the ability to be able to contribute, the ability to be able to uh, work together on a project, um, et cetera, um, and um, will um, uh, put only the licensing um, aspects on um, the y-axis. So what does that give us? Well, essentially, um, any kind of project that um, has an open source certified license will be on the top two quadrants, and open source projects that follow norms will be on the right two quadrants. So let's now dig in to each of those quadrants uh, more specifically, starting with the top left quadrant. This is um, the quadrant where you find projects that are open source in terms of their license, but don't really abide by your typical open source norms. Um, an example of this would be, for example, the Andro Android software, right? Android is an open source project in terms of its license, but from the perspective of all of the other aspects of open source that you would expect, for example, that the project is built in the open or that it accepts um, external contributions or at least considers them, not to mention things like ha it having an open governance. Um, well, that project doesn't meet any of these. Really the only thing that makes it open source, strictly speaking, is the fact that it has an open source license. And so, um, I really like the fact that um, some people have started talking about this and calling these projects nominally open source. Um, I sort of think of them as open source in letter only, not in spirit. Um, a lot of the open source projects, the high profile projects that we talked about initially, were actually in this quadrant. Um, and um, have moved downwards towards the bottom left quadrant as they abandon strictly OSI certified licenses um, in, in favor of licenses that made it easier for their business model, or that's their claim. And so this is the second quadrant I'd like for us to explore, which is the quadrant of um, software um, whose um, licenses are not open source certified and who ignore open source norms. And um, this has been dubbed open source. And open source um, um, is essentially um, projects that sort of claim to be open source um, from a licensing perspective, but aren't, and all, also really don't respect any of the typical norms of open source that you find. And, and this is really where you find a lot of the um, open source vendors um, um, who are um, who really see in open source essentially a marketing tool. We'll come back to this. So moving up um, to the top right-hand side corner, what do we find here? We find open source projects that are OSI certified, right? And um, that follow open source norms. And this is really the place where you want to be. Um, and I kind of call those community-driven open source, but that's a bit restrictive. There are projects in that space who are not community-driven. For example, smaller open source projects really belong in that space in terms of following norms and having an open source license, um, but are not technically community driven essentially because they're too small to be community driven. But the, the spirit clearly is absolutely there. And um, going down from that um, third quadrant um, right into the um, bottom right quadrant, um, this is an increasingly interesting quadrant to me. Um, why? Well, because you find a lot of projects in that space that respect and follow open source norms, 
but who don't um, have an OSI certified license. And there might be a number of reasons for this. What's really interesting to me is that category is actually um, way broader, right? So I, I, I talk about this in terms of like the broader ecosystem of open source. And I also think that in contrast with software that is open source and letter only, um, 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 software in that space is really open source in spirit, right? Even if it doesn't necessarily have an OSI certified license, it, it really abides by these norms. And I think if you really go at the very, very bottom of, of that space, you want to actually find their inner source, right? And what is inner source? Well, inner source is um, software that is built internally um, in a company or in an organization who is not open sourced in the strict sense, who doesn't have an OSI certified license, cannot be used by others, right? Um, but really is built using open source practices. Um, and so, you know, and, and this bottom right hand quadrant, you have sort of like this huge spectrum that goes from um, software that is, um, for example, um, a CCO license, so public domain software that doesn't, cannot be certified by the OSI for a number of reasons that we're not going to get into today, um, but that is extremely close to open source um, in, in every other way. Um, all through um, all of the Creative Commons, um, a lot of the Creative Commons, for example, um, um, the CC by non-commercial because of the non-commercial restrictions um, cannot really fall um, under the open source um, label, but are really close. I mean, it's not code, I understand, but from, from a, a, a sort of norms and, and, and spirit really feels part of this um, um, build on uh, remixing uh, culture that open source really has fostered. And then, um, and then you have all of the uh, ethical uh, source software, which I'm increasingly seeing as um, open source that is focused around uh, maybe smaller communities that don't necessarily um, want or desire that their software goes beyond um, those communities and essentially want to be able to um, uh, have some degree of control over how that software is used and going down all the way to inner source where it's really a software is really protected by um, uh, stays inside of an organization or, or a company. So to summarize and walk back through the different categories that we've defined using that um, two by two full quadrant structure. Um, starting off uh, where I started before, which is in the top left-hand quadrant um, where open source um, uh, is in letter only. Um, so, so projects in that space have a license that is certified by the OSI, um, but they really don't follow the open source norms at all. Um, it's really only about the license. So this is where you find projects like Android, uh, but it's, this is also where you find a lot of um, those high prof profile projects that have moved to open source um, over the last few years, like Elasticsearch and MongoDB were on, on this, in this top left quadrant uh, beforehand, i.e. they had an open source license, but they really weren't abiding by the norms that much. Another really common um, thing that you find in this uh, space is um, open source projects where um, community, the, 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 the terms don't apply the same way to the community as they do to the project um, vendor, the original creator of the project. Um, so uh, you see this very often with GPL plus CLA, where the CLA, which is the Contributor License Agreement, actually gives um, uh, the original creator of the um, software extra rights and essentially the right to relicense that software um, as they want. And, and this is how a lot of projects um, used to be um, monetized in the past, um, where 
um, um, the owner of the of the GPL would actually sell um, non GPL licenses um, to their clients. Moving down from that top left hand corner, um, you move to the bottom left, and this is the um, realm of uh, Phobin Source, right? Um, this is uh, software that really is there because there are marketing um, benefits. Um, for that software to sort of pretend that it looks a bit like um, uh, or OSI certified open source. Uh, but again, here you will not find uh, much in terms of um, open source norms. Moving to the um, top right hand quadrant, this is um, really um, what everyone thinks of and perceives as being true open source software. An OSI license on the one hand and uh, real community uh, open source practices and norms, uh, probably an open governance model, or if not, um, uh, clearly um, very open um, you know, contribution uh, system. Um, so the kind of open source software that we all sort of know and, and really like. And moving down from that top left hand corner, um, top right hand quadrant, sorry, into that bottom right hand quadrant is the broader ecosystem of digital commons, right? Um, and this includes a lot of creative commons stuff, um, um, ethical source, and uh, moving even further down to some degree, um, inner source. Um, so essentially, um, software um, that is built um, using open source norms, but doesn't necessarily have the OSI certification on its license, and so has some restrictions around usage, which um, might be problematic for some use cases, but are perfectly acceptable for others, right? And this is a really open source in spirit. All right, so um, still using the same quadrant, I'd like to offer um, a, a different perspective on uh, this quadrant, which is one that focuses not on the projects themselves, uh, but actually on the different constituencies that um, are a part of the open source community. Let's start with uh, the user focus. So, What's really interesting here is the perspective of a user around open source um, is really just to make sure from a legal perspective um, that they comply to the license and so that the license is actually a genuinely open source license because that makes compliance a lot easier. So the focus of um, open source users is really essentially the top two quadrants. Um, so the ones where the software is certified um, and to some degree, regardless of whether the software actually abides by um, open source community norms or not. However, savvy users of open source will um, check and, and be wary of um, software that doesn't um, abide by open source norms. And there's two reasons for this. One is this can really be open source in the making. So um, typically if, if you've been betting on, for example, Elastic for your open source project a number of years ago, now you're probably in a position where you're not super sure what you have to do. Maybe you want to rely on the uh, fork that Amazon is maintaining. So it's a bit of a, um, a complex situation that you probably didn't want to be in. So um, that is um, one reason to um, um, tend to look at not only whether the license is um, actually open source, but make sure that the community um, that the community exists around the software, um, and that um, the culture of the, the project really is an open source one. And of course, the other reason to do this is um, really from a um, 
um, a, a sustainability long-term health perspective of the project, right? Um, if a project has a sustainable um, um, multi-user um, governance model, etc., it is a lot easier. It's a, um, um, you know, much better position um, to participate to this project, fix the things that you care about, but also make sure that the project is still going to be there in two, three, four, five, six years. Um, so really the user perspective focuses on the license, um, absolutely, um, and, and, um, but also savvy users focus on norms. Now, if we look at open source contributors, well, their perspective is fairly different, right? Because they're much more interested about what the community looks like. I mean, um, lots of people um, don't mind uh, using the um, beer license or the what um, WTF license, sorry. Uh, and um, why? Because what matters to them is the contributing aspect, the community aspect, the respecting the norms aspect. And so um, really you will find these um, contributors caring more about um, norms than they will about licenses. And now I'd like to look at the last constituency that we're gonna look at today. Um, and these are software vendors. And um, while well, software vendors are kind of all over the quadrants, um, you will find some in every one of those quadrants. Um, and what, so what's really interesting is to understand how their perspective differs and kind of how they're thinking about open source um, in each of those different quadrants. So again, in the top left quadrant, um, vendors uh, are building software that has an open source license, but the open source aspect is um, there is more of a marketing gimmick to some degree um, than really uh, a reason to build um, a strong software together. Um, and so um, when um, projects slide from having an OSI certified uh, license to having an, um, a non-OSI certified license, their, their perspective changes from open source is great for marketing to open is great for marketing, right? So that's kind of where the perspective is. That contrasts quite a bit um, with projects that see open source not so much as a marketing strategy but as an engine to build really great software um for me the canonical example of this um is of course red hat which really um sees its upstream open source as um um a, a wonderful place to build great software and its role not so much as selling um, that software, but at making it um, really easy for their clients to be able to use that software well for their projects. Um, and so in that space, um, really the perspective is open source is a great way to build software. So, so that's in the top right hand. So this is OSI certified combined with um, abiding by open source norms, or I mean, I should say leveraging open source norms to build fantastic software. And so bottom um, right, um, well, uh, a lot of players in that field um, actually um, uh, are players that really care about open source but find it really hard to monetize. We're just concerned about monetizing open source software in that space. We just don't come from that culture. So for example, um, GitHub, when it started, um, I mean, it's still not open source today, but when it started, it really sort of felt like it was in that bottom right hand a culture, which is um, open source is great. You want to open source as much as you want, but if you open source too much or if you open source your whole product, it's going to be really hard to monetize it. And so instead, you should essentially be um, open sourcing 
um, uh, sort of the infrastructure or, or the pieces that made um, building what you're building um, easy to do. So this is um, the perspective from um, vendors, right? Um, so you see uh, um, moving from uh, a culture where open source is a marketing um, strategy to a culture where open source is really how you build um, great software. And then wondering about how to monetize open source in that space. All right, so to conclude this presentation, really what I wanted to show, to show you today was that open source is a lot more than just um, its uh, license. Um, and this is something that that's a feeling that we all in, intimately have. Um, 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 and I really want to validate this feeling. Open source is about community. Open source um, is about uh, open source norms. It's about um, a, a shared sense of purpose. It's about all of these things. And it's extremely important uh, not to um, reduce open source to just the license. Um, um, and not only for these, uh, uh, to some of your personal reasons, but also uh, for the business aspects of this. Because um, when you stop considering open source more, more globally and just consider the licensing aspects, you start missing um, signals that a project is actually on a trajectory uh, or at least on a potential trajectory to becoming open source and, uh, and creating a world of hurt uh, for um, um, uh, companies, uh, developers, projects that have been building on top of it. So um, there are really good signals that you can pick, um, pick on um, uh, to avoid putting yourself in that situation, or at least if you really have to rely on a project that is risky from a community health perspective, do so knowingly. And these signals are essentially around um, those typical norms that we talk about, like is it easy to contribute to that project? Um, is the, are the maintainers um, all from one company? Is there an open governance model? Is the project in a foundation or is it really controlled by a company? Um, what about the trademarks? Is there like a lot of confusion between the name of a company uh, that's behind the project and the project itself? All of these are red flags. Um, if, if you see those, thread carefully because um, you might very well uh, put yourself in harm's way in um, the midterm, right? Um, um, but to end on a more positive note, I think it's um, um, this exercise is also really valuable because it shows that one of the key aspects of open source are all of the community norms aspect. Um, this is what creates this uh, really high quality software that we all care about, and those same practices, um, the, the, the same spirit of open source can be used elsewhere, elsewhere to great success. Whether that is inside of a company, uh, call it inner source if you want to, or in um, uh, projects that are more restricted in terms of um, who is able to use them. Uh, for example, um, uh, CC by non-commercial or ethical source licenses, um, but still really carry the spirit of open source um, because um, it's the spirit, it's these um, uh, community aspects um, that we really um, see value in personally and that are also extremely valuable in order to create um, software that is um, of uh, really great quality. So uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, I'm happy to take questions, uh, one more questions now, um, and, and to hear uh, your comments uh, about um, uh, this um, sort of more nuanced answer to the question of what is open source. Thank you very much.